I'm kind of here just to talk about my uh, mobile application development experience in college. So um, it was the last semester of college, and as a business major, um, I felt like I was a little bit on track to either be the ABCs of business, accounting, banking, or consulting, and it wasn't really quite a fit for me. So I was struggling to really find something else that I could do um, outside of those things, just because my school was very focused on getting career paths in those three um, fields. And so when I came across this class called Mobile Application Entrepreneurship, I kind of just jumped on it, because technology just has such transformative effects on society, and at least all of you out here, who here has a smartphone? Thank you. You're probably tweeting or checking your Facebook status as I speak. Like, mobile opportunity is exploding, and Angry Birds is incredibly profitable. Outside of the profit, though, um, mobile technology is just becoming the primary way that people connect not only to the web, but to each other. And so when I took this class, I was really scared because I didn't really know what I was getting into. Um, the entire purpose of the class was to create, design, and prototype a working mobile application. But beyond that, create a sustainable business behind it. Wait, wait, wait. I had to create a business? I, as a business major, that was shocking because I've never even toyed with entrepreneurship before. I've never created a business, and mobile was definitely on the front lines of emerging technologies. And so when creating my business plan, um, the market research was difficult. There was no data. All of the databases, all of the encyclopedias in the library were just outdated. Even if you were late by a year, the data was already irrelevant. Feasibility and financial projections and analysis had to be made on looser assumptions just because there weren't that many compar comparable apps out there yet. So what did we make? What we decided to do was to create a note-making application. We wanted to use a special technology called optical character recognition, whereby the text um, can be extracted from an image. So if you were to take a picture of a textbook or any sort of print um, image, you can extract the text and edit it. So what does this mean for a note-making application? This means that images are no longer static. They're livable. You can virtually scan any source of printed material. This means you didn't have to carry around a textbook. This means you didn't have to buy a textbook. This means you could copy and create notes as easily as you wanted. So what we wanted to do beyond that was to actually give it a little bit more granular functionality. What if you could extract just the highlighted parts of your textbook? That means you could extract only the most relevant information for you, so that when you were studying, you wouldn't have to relook over all of the data that you've already studied. You would only study the problems that you had the most difficulty with. Of course, we had to add um, audio functionality, video functionality, just because there were podcasts and webcasts, and people learned differently. And so the entire value proposition was to create an interactive, customizable note that would help you have a virtual cheat sheet, so to speak. So our professor definitely made it a point to emphasize forming the right team, coming up with a great idea, and build something real. Because honestly, life wasn't like school. You weren't graded on success. You either did or you didn't. That was the end of it. From there, what happened was we were feeling pretty good at that point. We had developed a prototype. It was working. It wasn't the prettiest thing, but it was working. And we launched our first iteration of the product, and we thought it was going to be absolutely perfect. We thought people were going to fall in love with it. We were completely wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our initial feedback said that the OCR, the, opt the actual technology, was pretty cool. People played with it for about five minutes before they got over it. And a lot of students actually like to write out their notes. A lot of students like to type up their notes. And the mobile functionality wasn't used as a note-taking device. But the main thing was that they liked having notes on the go. Um, in addition, students really like to share their notes. Like 80% of the students we surveyed shared their notes with their friends. But within classrooms with up to 250 students, not everyone knew each other, and so that wasn't likely. So what we thought of was perhaps a marketplace for notes, like a black market for like online notes. Um, so um, we had to kind of pivot from there, and um, what we did was we had to um, focus our, refocus our business plan to emphasize more of the sharing aspect, and by extension, the marketplace for buying and sharing notes buying and selling notes. And um, we also had to focus on um, building cross-functional platforms so that your notes could be accessed from virtually any device, your desktop, your phone, or your tablet. So um, from there, we um, were then um, judged by a panel of venture capitalists within our class, and we won. 
Um, and with that, we were afforded the rare opportunity to go to Barcelona, where we were able to compete in the Mobile World um, Congress in this University Mobile Challenge um, against 11 universities from around the world, and it was just a great experience and a great learning experience. Um, we also won there. Um, I guess the, the greatest things that I learned out of this was just that you really can do anything if you put your mind to it, like things that you never thought were possible. This was definitely an eye-opening eye opportunity for that. So after the competition, we really assessed whether or not we wanted to go forward with it. Um, there was the possibility of raising angel funding, and it was not um, really I think in our best interest because there was, our team was still in school for the most part. And although I was in my last year, there were still other students who wanted to stay in college, great thing, um, and pursue graduate studies. And some other students had to go abroad to work. After that, I actually got a chance to work with this amazing organization called Founder School. And so Founder School is a nonprofit incubator within the, Uni um, the University of California at Berkeley, created just this summer by Steve Newcomb. And Steve is probably best known for being the co-founder of PowerSet, which eventually got acquired by Microsoft and is now part of the search engine Bing. And what Steve wanted to do with Founder School was to create this community of startups, this incubator, much like Y Combinator, and just to help first-time founders connect with seasoned entrepreneurs to really create startups to really grow themselves, test their will, test their strength, and create companies of value. Um, there was a strong disconnect um, with many of the college students around me, and they were craving experiential learning experience, um, experiences that were more tied to what reality would be like, not always studying really hard for the grade. And so as I ended my college career, all I could think about was why weren't there enough of these programs and these opportunities to help students gain the experience they needed to succeed and perform better in society. Um, what's great also about Founder School is that it not only taught you how to build your business, but within a safe environment of the school, you could fail and you could learn to pick yourself back up. And if you didn't succeed in raising funding, what you would do is you just go back to school quietly and. You, it was a perfectly safe environment for you to try, fail, and pick yourself back up. And so that was the best thing I thought about Founder School. And so um, for me, a lot of my peers also just, there was this disconnect in terms of the university experience. We didn't have that many experiential learning experiences. We went to college, we studied theoretical physics. What do you do with that after you graduate? Um, students felt pigeonholed into specific career paths just because of their major, and they weren't given a lot of guidance or coaching on to where to go when their first option was no longer an option. And finally, students that have done traditionally everything right. These are the students that got straight A's, they went to a good college, they studied hard, and then once they left, they were faced with high amounts of student debt and no jobs. And so it really hit home for me for just how lucky I've been in terms of being able to experience some of these opportunities and learn and grow from it myself. And so um, these two programs address the problems using entrepreneurship, of course, as a tool to revitalize and really inspire the students. And it's only one of many tools that I hope will come out of these programs that you guys are designing. Um, today, Founder School has successfully graduated four startups, three of which have raised funding. Um, the class that I took is actually having their demo day tomorrow, and it's grown even bigger, and there's even better talent with so much technological innovation happening, and I'll be attending that tomorrow. Um, I just have to say that like, I am incredibly grateful to everyone who's helped me along this journey, and it's primarily been the work of the nonprofit that sponsored my trip to Barcelona, the class I've taken, and just meeting the right people at the right time. And it's an incredibly lucky experience, and I want that to be scalable. I don't want to be the exception. This should be the rule. And so I guess like the two takeaways was um, primarily be fearless. You can do anything you want. Um, it's scary just because education has so much higher stakes. You're not designing for some end user at this point. You're designing for the entire broader spectrum of stakeholders, students, parents, teachers, society. Like all of these inputs need to be need to be addressed and challenged, but change needs to happen because doing nothing has harder consequences. 
And finally, don't do it alone. Um, as a business major, I'm a little bit competitive, so um, we weren't always um, collaborative. But at, on that same note, like I could not have done this without the help of a lot of other people who were so much different from me. I learned so much about engineering, and I'm actually learning how to code right now, and it's a headache. But like there's a lot of power in collaboration and the cross-pollination of ideas. And so I know there's always like a bureaucracy barrier or there's the academia versus industry and policy. I don't know how it fits together, but all of us are passionate about the exact same idea. So why can't we work all together to fix it? So that's all.